The character panel in Illustrator allows us to select a font and its various settings. However, there's more we can do in order to streamline our workflow. As you work throughout many projects, your system may eventually reach a point where you have more fonts than you can handle or even recall. And so we have features at our disposal which we can use to make font management so much easier. So selecting the font, if we go to the character panel, the first drop down is the font name. Clicking upon that, we have fonts listed from A to Z. Here you'll see we have two lines here and here. Above the second line down are variable fonts, which I'll cover later. And above the first line are fonts I've recently used for my convenience. As you'll see, as I scroll down the fonts, the font on the artboard changes in real time. So this helps me select a suitable font. As you'll see, there's a preview of the font on the right hand side here. We have all the font previews in the central column here, if you count this one to the right. We can change the size of these previews by clicking show smaller sample text size or indeed a more useful one which is show larger sample text size. Obviously if you use the smaller you can fit more into the window. So I'm just going to keep it at the medium size. So I'm going to scroll through those fonts to find one that I like. I'm going to choose this one. This is a script type font. As you see, when we were in this menu, there's various filters we can select. There is filter fonts by classification, show favorite fonts, show recently added, and show activated fonts. So selecting filter fonts by classification. First of all, we have the option to filter fonts into sans serifs, which means without serifs or serif. Serifs are the lines at the corners and the ends of characters. The next is slab serif. Slab serif is basically the same as serif, apart from the serifs, the lines, are more slab-like, the much thicker. Next we have script, which can be regarded as flowing or calligraphy. Next we have black letter, gothic style or old style. We have monospaced. We have handwritten or handmade, if you will. Next, we have decorative, which covers swashes, distress styles, and irregular styles. At the bottom, we can also search by properties, including light, weight, and heavy weight. I won't go into these too deeply, since you can judge by the icons, which are self-explanatory. So that covers the classification option, and we can filter by any of these. So let's select sans serif, and here you'll see the filter is applied, and all of those sans serif fonts are now listed. We don't see any font styles here now which are not serif. So deselecting this filter, the next I want to go on to is this here which is show favorite fonts. As we scroll down the fonts, you'll see that each one when we mouse over has a star at the right hand side of it. The star is outlined, if we click it, it becomes a filled black star and this favorites the font. If I do this with another, clicking the star, if I click the star up here in the filters, this is my favorite fonts list. And here you'll see those two fonts, which I favorited, Airways and Alba, now appear in this list. So this serves to my convenience. If I use these fonts regularly, obviously I'd favorite them and I can access them at any time in the favorites filter. Now if I wish to unfavorite these fonts, I simply click the black star again and they disappear from the favorite fonts list. In the font list, you also may have noticed a wiggly line next to the star. Now we can click upon this wiggly line to find similar fonts to the one which is highlighted. So here we have Aerolite Italic. I'm gonna click those wiggly lines. And now I'm shown a range of other fonts which are similar to this. And this can be particularly useful in projects if we can't use a certain font but need to find a substitute or one which will complement a font. And to return to the original unfiltered font list, we simply click back at top right. Now we can install more fonts via Adobe by clicking Find More. 
Upon doing this, we're presented with a new list of fonts, ones which are on the Adobe Cloud. We can scroll down to find a font of our choosing. I'm going to choose Azo Sans Uber Regular. And to download it, I'm going to click the cloud with the down arrow. A pop-up appears asking if you wish to activate the font. I'm going to click OK. Now I have confirmation that the font has been activated on my Mac at top right there. PC users won't witness this. Now if I go to the show recently added icon, which is the clock, and I click upon that, you'll see the font appears here as Osan's Uber Regular because I've just recently added this to my computer. If I click the cloud with a check mark, which is show activated fonts, you'll see that this font also appears here because it's the one I've recently activated from Adobe's cloud. And this is exclusive, this list, to fonts which have been downloaded in that manner. Going back to the clock, the recently added list, Fonts which have been added by whatever means through Adobe Cloud or otherwise will appear here. As you become familiar with Illustrator and any selection of fonts you might use regularly, you can simply type in the font name into the character panel. So double clicking the existing font, hitting backspace and typing in the name of the font will reveal the font or fonts which you can select. So all in all, this demonstrates the way in which we can manage our fonts and work with them in a way which promotes a more effective and pleasing workflow.